So I'm back in the, basically the northeast corner of my place. The actual corner is down over the hill over here. That's my aunt and uncle's place over there. This fence row. Uh, right there. But, so this, this is the back corner of my place. And as you can see, it's kind of grown up to medium size, mostly poplar. There's some white oak in here, some odds and ends of hawthorn, native crab apple, little walnut tree right here, which there's not a whole lot of those back here. They're a lot more common out in the other field. But, so, this is, this is the area in the back. And this is going to be converted over into a combination of coppice and silvo pasture over the next few years. I've cut some of this before, like uh, here you can see. Like, this is a tree that I cut before. I had built a little shelter over there. Oh, almost 20 years ago. Was it that long? Mm. Let's see, that would have been 20... No, that was, the, that was the other one. The 20 years ago one was further up. This one was only about 12 years ago. As you can see, there's really nothing left of it because it was all just natural materials and when I was done with it and stopped maintaining it, it went back into the ground. But so, yeah, see here's a fairly nice dogwood right here. This one, that's our native dogwood. And over here you can see here's a white oak, another white oak couple more of them over there. Um, so this area used to be an open field when I was, oh, when I was a little kid. So when, like when I was five, six years old, this was an open field. Originally, this slope, this north facing slope was actually the orchard that attached to my aunt and uncle's place down in the valley. And this is actually directly behind their house. You see there's a black oak of some kind come up right there. Not sure what kind. It's had some issues. Probably, uh, probably a deer rubbing on it when it was smaller. And some sumac growing back in here. This area, as I said, is going to get converted over to coppice and silver pasture. And some of it, I'll probably put in a fair bit of fruit and nut trees back here. Some of the chestnuts are going to go back here. I may turn this north slope into orchard again. It's a good area. There's not a lot of big trees down there that would have to be cleared out to do it. And all my other north slopes are very steep and they're high forest and I don't want to mess with that. I don't want to be cutting down high forest for orchard. <laughs> so, yeah, see here's one lone cedar tree out here in the middle of, here, of, the, of the area. More of the sumac. A few red buds here and there. But it's mostly it's mostly poplar back here and the white oaks. And the white oaks actually are, are mostly ones that my grandparents planted when I was a kid. in this section they are. In, in the main forest they're just in the main forest the white oaks are mostly planted by squirrels but back in this field a lot of these white oaks were ones put in on purpose. There used to be coming down through here you used to be able to drive a truck or tractor down through here. And I'll have to decide exactly where I'm gonna put the path when I restore all that. Hey, what do we have here? Looks like... 
Ah, very nice, very nice. A basswood tree. I'll be keeping that one. It's got some deer damage as well, see. Some buck rub from a few years ago. But very nice, very nice. I'll probably cut that one back to the ground and cut all the trees around it back to give it some, some room to get going again, coppice it down this winter. Because that, that's going to keep it from getting much bigger before it falls over anyway. So we'll go ahead and, go ahead and jump start the, the regeneration process on this tree. Take it down to ground level. Cut these tulip poplars around it back. Some of them I'll probably take all the way down. Coppice. Some have been coppiced or poly before. Look, this one's been cut before. This was cut, uh, let's see, about 10 years ago. And the same thing over here, you can see. This was cut as a pollard about 10 years ago. And you can see how much it's grown back up since then. And I'll need to cut that one again soon. Because the pollard on tulip poplar, if you let it go too long, then the top pieces break off and the tree just dies and it doesn't it doesn't regenerate again so i'll have to take out that main piece and cut back these two side shoots same thing for that one and over there it has to be done often enough to keep them from getting top heavy but not so often that they can't build up their reserves again and be able to recover which is Usually it's it's eight to twelve years is about is about right for tulip poplar. It's about as far as you want to let them go if they're pollards. If they're coppice, you can go further. Uh, you can maybe push it up to twenty years, but you're gonna l be more likely to lose trees that way. They won't recover as well if they're if they're allowed to get too old before they're cut. So this is over here some more that have been cut before you see these little multi-trunk trees and here's one that has not been cut see this tree and you see it's you know, just straight up there's no signs of cuts on it I'll have to prune some of these white oaks up, get to take these lower branches out and raise them. Probably add some hazel back here. Probably add hazel to a lot of places actually. I've been finding lots of good spots to put hazel in. As far as I can tell, you can't have too much hazel. I mean, I guess you could if you need the space for something else, but it's always useful stuff. Uh, invasive Asian bittersweet. That's probably my most troublesome plant on the farm is the Asian bittersweet. Uh, I'll have to come through and cut all that down. I got a bunch of it up front that I've got to cut back and try and get under control as well. It's a pain. And the autumn olive, you can see it holds its leaves a lot longer than most of the natives. It's not adjusted to our climate. You know, it's not from here. So it just hangs on green a lot later in the season. Which has good and bad points. Um, like back here, I could run the goats through back here and graze this off, browse this off. If I had the fence up, which I don't. So anyway, so that's a that's a view of the back. Um, I guess you'd say it's the back used to be a field, may one day again be a field. And uh, yeah, soil's pretty pretty thin back here because it was, you know, people tried to farm on it before we were on the land, before my family was here. 
and ridge ridge top farming yeah just you lose a lot of soil if it's not done just right and back in those days almost nobody did it right so it takes a long time to fix that So, anyway, that's a look at another section of the farm that I hadn't gotten back to with the video camera before. And there you have it. October in the northeast corner of the farm.